Hi, Lukman. Hi, Oluma, how are you? I'm good. Welcome back good to, to the channel. Good, good to, to see, see you again. again. Yeah, good to see you again. Guess you are doing well. Always here to help um, our immigrants that want to travel to Irish to work as a nurse. So thank you for being Irish aspiring I nurses. Irish, uh, that's the English. Aspire Irish nurses. Yeah, you guys are welcome to Oluma channel. Thank you. <laughs> that's my girl. What's up? I'm fine. I'm good. Good to have yeah. you back. We've got so see, yeah. many questions from the last. I can week. see you are already preparing for winter. <laughs> Getting your winter caps on and on the cardigan. I'm prepared already. Okay, it's very, that's it's, good. It's, it's always it's already very 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 cold. Yeah, the temperature is dropping, so it's you have to cold. dress warm. Yeah. So. Yeah. So welcome back again. Thank um, you. So from the last video we did, we got so many questions. Like I'm like, oh my god. I think I have to get Lukman to come back to this channel. So many people are sending me emails. I can tell you, like, the emails I've gotten about Ireland, I can't, I can't remember, but are, I'm sure there are more than 20. So I think I, I just went back to the videos to just see the questions people have here because apparently I can't answer all of them myself. And um, so one of the questions someone said, um, can having IL score of overall seven? Oh, I have IL score of overall seven, but six point five in reading and six point five in writing. Can I qualify for Ireland? To be sincere, I don't really know what I the remember. English requirement is at the moment, but uh, I think you need to have six point five, one six point five, or like. Before now, we used to have 6.5 in reading, 6.5 in listening, and 7 in speaking, and 7 in writing. That was back in the days. Mm. Then it was reviewed, and uh, they want minimum of 3.7 and 6.5 in any of the band. Mm. Now that the UK is coming up with a minimum of 6.5 in all band and minimum of 6 in writing, I think Ireland, we should be expecting a review soon. From the island because they go where UK goes. Mm. So at the moment, if you have 6.5, 6.5, 7, 7, you, you are not qualified with Ireland requirement. However, just slip tight and keep your finger crossed. You could get in and uh, that same scores you're talking about will be enough to enter with the new UK requirement. So if you ever have that score, 6.5, 6.5, 7, 7, you are good to go with current NMC uh, band changes. So, mm. and I was on uh, New Zealand websites last week. I think they are they too are making changes to English requirements. So, this English requirement is actually going around thing, and uh, it's basically everywhere in the world because it's turned out to be they need nurses like they want to steal non nurses from other country, and English requirement is a barrier. So they are trying to bring the English down. So they could steal more nurses. That's just the way I'm seeing it. Mm. And uh, like I had posted on my status recently, I saw my first uh, IET result I did back in 2016. And I was like, the UK government, or what they call it, NMC owed me an apology. Because in that, I scored 6.5. I scored, I had two seven, I had six in writing. If I had that score at the moment, I would be applying straight away to NMC. So. If you have a lower score at the moment, just go through whatever you have and uh, you could be qualified for the current yeah. uh, NMC. So yeah. that's the way it is now, yeah. All right, thank you. Um, And someone said, uh, what about if you want to bring your spouse, how long will it take? Um, Because I heard it takes so long. Please clarify. Okay. On the issue of family revocation for Irish nurses, it has uh, it has been an accurate task since COVID. And uh, if you are listening from Nigeria or Ghana, it could take you up to two years. I'm not scaring you. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah, because I think I've heard so many things about Yeah. So if you are watching from Nigeria or from Ghana, we have a problem. And the problem wasn't paramount with other countries, like other people from other continents, like uh, Indians, Filipinos. They can get in their spouse 
within two weeks of their critical case permit. But in Nigeria, we discover Abuja is a problem. We, we've tried, we wrote a letter. This case even came up in the dial. Dial is like their Senate. And uh, the answer the Minister of Justice was given was like each embassy or each mission has uh, their own peculiarity to the task of processing. So they can we can continue be using India or Filipino as a yardstick. Like um, the Nigerian problem is, which every one of us actually know, is verification take longer time. Mm. Although we are blaming them because I applied for people to go to the UK with their family and within one week of biometric, they get their visa. So why the delay in Nigeria? Is the Irish government and Irish embassy a bigger problem? We are working tirelessly as a union to get this resolved, at least to limit it to within three months, so that we can bring more Nigerians, Ghanaians to Ireland. So, but that shouldn't deter you from coming. You should know if it's more a problem for people who are married, like newly married, like if you married within one year, like or probably you came in, you went back to marry. I understand them. But if you have married, like if you have married like 10 years, it's more easier. Like you won't have a problem the moment they get your turn, they'll process and you get your visa. So that's yeah. it. Yeah. And your wife can always come back home or your husband can always come back home, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. But do you think it's changed over the years? Do you think it's still the same um processing time, the time you did for no? Jobs? When I did mine, it was six months. Then like Within six months, you get your visa, you know. But since COVID started, the embassy stopped working, COVID mayor and everything. Then the number of people coming increases. So I guess they got overwhelmed. But they are working on their backlogs. They are trying to recruit more people for the missions and everything. So I believe we maybe by next year, things should improve and probably go back to the six months. Okay, so someone said it's OAT acceptable in Ireland. Yeah, OAT is acceptable. Just like if you want to know what is uh, going on with uh, as a language requirement, just go to nmbi.ie and go to under international uh, nurses. Then you will see the current English requirement. OAT is accepted and uh, IAT is accepted. All right. Someone said, as a registered nurse in Finland, how do I need to move to Ireland and work as a PRN or RN? Um, I think that should be no, because I mean, practical nurse is different, isn't it? So as a practical yeah. nurse in Finland, can I work, move to the island to work as a practical um, nurse or registered nurse? So I think that's pretty forward, isn't it? The issue there is that if you are a PRN in Finland, you are a PRN, you are not a registered nurse. There's no, a difference it's... between the two. So if you come into Ireland, definitely you'll be working in uh, as an healthcare assistant, something. So maybe a senior healthcare assistant, just because you are not a nurse, you are not a nurse. Like once you're not a nurse, you are not a nurse. No, there's no argument about it. We all know what is going to make you a registered nurse. So if you're not a registered nurse in where you are, why did you want to be a registered nurse here? Exactly, because so, you haven't got the license and things. Yeah, so get your RN license in Finland and uh, you can migrate to Ireland to work as a nurse. That's it. Okay. Um, and someone said something like, um, the patient ratio in Ireland is too much. So having one to 13 patients per nurse. And I'm, I'm asking now, is that, how it is like everywhere in Ireland, or this person is just making generalization. <laughs> just, I think the answer is kind of yes <laughs> from your reaction. No, <laughs> the issue there is that I don't know where this person is commenting from. Um, if, as well. if, yeah, no, the answer is no. You know, we have different settings. We have different nurse patient ratios. For instance, luckily I've worked nearly in all settings in this country. 
and I will give you each scenario. If you work in a private nursing home, whereby your medication is in a tosho. Tosho, what's that? A tosho is like a pre prepared bag. So they already make the medication of your patient in an envelope, small, clear envelope. Oh, so oh, we call it a different name in UK. Yeah, so that medication has been prepared in the tosho pack, and all you just need to do as a nurse is to open the tosho and give the patient, and you are not using a paper, you are using a computer to tick your medication. Mm -hmm. Basically, what the nurses does in those settings is giving medications in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night. The pharmacy already prepared the meds. You just go to your, okay, uh, Lampraso is there, uh, guanine is there, this is there, and you just stick and you give the medication. That, you could have 15 patients to give medication. Mm -hmm. You are not involved in the care of the patient. The healthcare assistants do the washing, bringing them to the dining room, ensure they have their meal, they bring them back to their room in the evening, they put them to bed. If they only see probably an abrasion or something, they bring to your notice, or probably you have someone who has a wound, or a patient's uh, fluid intake is not enough, and you need to give them a subcute fluid. That is what you do. I don't think seeing having a 15 patient load in yeah. that scenario is much. I don't think so as well. Yeah. That is one scenario one. Scenario two is the subacute settings, which most cases you have six patients. Tell anyone working in Irish hospitals during the day shift, they only have maximum of six patients. Mm, if so, you are working on the ward mm. because you pick your medication you pick one by one and you go ahead and give the medication and you work with probably a care assistant to make sure the patients get their body wash they get their food they get their fluid so it's different from somebody who is working in a nursing home setting. Mm -hmm. Now, the third setting is those who work in AI. &E. I work in AI. &E. For people working in AI and E, you don't even know the number of patients you are attended to in a day. And even though in these cases, it's not going to be a total nursing care. Let's be frank. Majorly, is the doctor prescribe the medication, you give the medication, you check the vitals. You know, the vitals sometimes, your healthcare assistant helps you to check. They only comes to you when the vitals are off mark. So when people comes out and generalize, like they give 30, they give 20, they give 40, try to understand the settings they are talking about. If you are in a nursing home settings, it's different. Yeah. It's different. If you are in acute settings, it's different. So yeah, but that's people yeah. just comes in and say, no, they have 30 patients. You don't have 30 patients. Yeah. Yeah. When your tosho is at when your tosho when your tosho has been prepared, I think it's no, kind of so... because in care homes here as well, we have people have like um one nurse to like thirty residents. Yes, at night time. Yeah. Yeah. But, but these people were sleeping all through the night. Yeah. The carer, are the one that changed their pass, check them, and every they only come to you like ah nurse, this thing is going wrong somewhere, and you need to seek your attention. So I don't really. Count that as a Benchmark you telling people it. like uh, 30 patients or 20 patients or so. So I think we should try to understand the settings before we say, oh no, this is what is happening. No, that is not the way it is. It's something obtainable for everyone. Just like somebody who walks in ICU with one patient, you can't compare it with somebody who walks in, in the ward. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's not they are doing two different things. Yeah. Yeah. Someone is asking. <laughs> I don't know why I'm just smiling, but is it always raining in Ireland? What kind of question is that? I like what kind of question? Okay, now that? let me tell the person this. Just about the where you are. Is it always sunny? <laughs> or is it always wintry? Or uh, because number one, we need to understand where Ireland is on the map. 
Ireland is the middle of Atlantic Ocean. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it so rains a lot here. We will rain more. Yeah. But that does not mean it rains every day. Every day, yeah. Now let me tell you, if you want to come to Ireland, there is no bad weather in Ireland, but there's a bad dress. Bad what? Bad dressing. Ah. So, if you know and you dress well, mm -hmm. you have no problem with the weather. It could rain in the morning, sunny in the afternoon, wintry in the evening, mm -hmm. and summer in the night. That is yeah. Ireland. The lovely country you could have four seasons in a day. <laughs> and we love it that way. So <laughs> if you want to come in, get prepared. That's it. So good. Thank you. And um, there's a question here about exam. And you know, remember in the first video, you mentioned something about six staying for six um is it six weeks i can't remember there is a visa you mentioned about in the first video that you have to sit for an exam after some time after migrating is so there any exam? An exam yeah we have uh, two pathways to license in ireland so someone we is have asking the, someone we have is the rcsi asking. aptitude test we and we have the yeah. Hospital in the uh, what do you call it? No. Uh adaptation program. So someone is asking, will you go back to your home country if for any reason you are not able to pass the exam in the first sitting? Or do you have any receipt? No, the exam is uh for every exam, you know, like I think nothing over the year, even the medicine, it always comes with the opportunity to receive immediately after you had a failure. Yeah. So if you attempt the first one and you fail, you have the opportunity to receive the second one. Mm -hmm. Now, at this point, your contract as a nurse has not materialized. Your employer could drop you. But because when you are coming to Ireland, you have your atypical skill, which allow you to be in the country for three months before you have your work permit ready so with that most people nobody has ever go back to their country that's basic truth mm -hmm. you can quote me anyway like lukman said nobody had ever go back to their country because they fail attitude test so what most people do is because because you fail you can't attempt the exam until another 12 months mm -hmm. yeah so what you will do is you get a job as a care assistant and they sponsor you for general work permits which is a one year and you will be in the country start for all over and um yeah get things started. Again. yeah right okay that's a good one um as someone said here um i have 11 years of experience in india and i've got an offer letter with 18.5 euro per hour contract in a nursing home in Ireland. 18.5 euro per hour. Is it worthy or should I move to a hospital? And if I should move to the hospital, what will be my hourly rate in the hospital? Okay. Now, the issue with nursing home is uh, for my Indian colleagues, it depends on their recruiter sometimes. I still got a job for two Nigerian nurses in nursing home recently, and the hourly rate was 19.5 mm. for start. Then after, I think after one month, after one year or six months or thereabouts, it's going to increase to 20 euro. Now, this person that is asking the question, where is the locations of the nursing home? Um, she didn't mention. Yeah, now, so... If you have 18 euro per hour in a nursing home in the county, that the house rent is going to be 1,000 for your family. Mm -hmm. I have I have a friend who got a job in a nursing home that paying him 17.5 euro per hour, and he was paying 500 euro for three bedroom flats. Oh. And myself, I was earning, I think, 19.5 euro then, and I was paying... 1,350 euro for my three bedroom flats. Hmm. 
You know he has more money than I do. Mm-hmm. Of course. Because 500 minus 1,350. Mm. He has 850 euros to save. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So if a nursing home in Dublin give you 20 euros per hour and a nursing home in uh, County Westmeath mm-hmm. is offering you 17.5. My dear, your life is far better than that guy in Dublin. Because his own rent alone for one room, he will be paying 800 euros. That's true. Yeah. So it depends on where that is. Secondly, yeah, that person could try in an hospital if he had an offer from hospital. As HSC is going to recognize your year of experience, provided you can prove it. Yeah. So if you can prove your year of experience, HSC will happy to prove it. They are happy to accept it and put you on uh, point 10. And you could be on uh, like 20 euro, 20.1 euro per hour. I don't know. Depends on your skills. So it depends. So the person can follow the route that they want. Right. Um, thank you. And someone is asking, sorry, um, do you know the pathway for midwives to work in Ireland? Okay. If you want to register as a midwife in Ireland from a foreign country, your first point of call is NMBI. So you register with NMBI, provide all the necessary documents, and uh, you have your decision letter then you can approach the major midwifery hospitals like Rotunda, uh, we have about three of them in Dublin. Then some uh, regional hospitals also have midwifery service. Then if you get employed, they will be, now you can do RCSI aptitude test as a midwife. So what you are going to do is adaptation. So you do adaptation with the hospital that ever employed you. And uh, once you finish your six week adaptation, you they will send your assessment to an MBI. And once they deem you fit, you have your pain and uh, you can start working. Ah. It's not hard. Yeah. And we need more, we need more midwives in Ireland as well. Wow. Okay. You know, just like in UK, we don't really, midwives come, but people don't really know about the processes for midwives to come. But um, I think recently it's been more, you know, um, known to people. but before people really know about how. Yeah, they're like, I had a sister that had that same issue. She did a midwifery first in Nigeria mm. and uh, later do nursing. Mm. And when she applied to NMBI, NMBI told her they are registering her on a midwifery register, not on the nursing register because her primary education was in midwife. And someone said, I think this will be the last question. And um, every other thing, I think I've tried to answer them on my email. So someone said, can I apply to work directly after getting a decision letter? I have to work directly as in, can, can they look for employer talk, themselves? Yeah, and not going through agency or something. Um, I think what happened there was uh, this issue of ban of a thing like the employer are not really in direct contact because they deal with the homegrown nurses recruitment mm-hmm. so they contract it to a recruiting agent whom in turn shortlisted you and uh, put you forward to the hospitals or the nursing home to interview it so it's like i have not really seen a situation whereby a non-Irish educated nurses mm-hmm. got a job directly from the nursing home or from the hospital. If you even approach them, mm-hmm. they will tell you they don't employ foreign nurses. Oh, okay. Because uh, not until you have your pain, you're actually not a nurse. I think people should tend to understand the stages. Not on the day you have your pain in Ireland, you are not a nurse yet. Mm-hmm. You are international educated nurses who has not been certified to practice in Ireland. So you need to go through all the process and the hospital doesn't have the time to be chasing you to bring your documents and everything. 
So they leave that to the recruiter with a fee and they sort that out. And once that is sorted, then once you have your pin, they take you on as your staff. Okay, right. So um, someone is asking about, do you know any agencies um, for recruitment? So there, I'm not sure that's appropriate for you to see what I said. <laughs> the issue is like there are a lot of agencies and I and they can see them online right yeah like you can we have KCR I work with OSP recruitment and she's very good I work with Care Network and uh, those one recruit internationally CPL also recruit internationally Safety Source recruit internationally so you can approach all these people they are reliable They've worked with international nurses that I know of, and people are happy. So all of them are very good. Just that, like, it depends on the number or demand they have. So they may not answer you on time, but that does not mean you should, when you are looking for a job, you keep sending till you get what you want. Yeah, right. Wow. Thank you so much for today, Lupin. Thank you, and... Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's all I can say. For always being honest and, you know, sharing all your experiences with us. Okay, thank you. Have a good day. You too. Bye.